that's not been a very good week for salt and pepper shakers, has it? As well as palm trees. Oh, and what about Harry and Meghan? On Thursday, Buckingham Palace released a statement, all 36 words, saying that Harry will be attending his father's coronation next month, but Meghan will not. And instead, she's going to be staying home with the couple's two invisible children. Well, I guess this revelation is officially putting an end to about six months of speculation about whether or not Meghan and Harry would show up for His Majesty's Big Day. A serious question mark over their attendance, considering that the relationship between the royal family and the California-based whiners are about one step away from some Jerry Springer-type hair-pulling on the palace forecourt. Reports are suggesting that Charles is happy that his younger son, and the number one source of stress-related dermatitis, is going to be there in the crowd for the most important day of his life. But what has mostly been overlooked is one especially unusual detail. Harry and Meghan are not doing this together. Ever since their engagement interview back in November of 2017, Meghan and Harry have been physically holding on to each other in public like they're forever concerned the other might be blown away. Inside Westminster Abbey, the UN General Assembly, the 9-11 Memorial, Windsor Castle, Buckingham Palace, on red carpets, on the streets of London, I mean even delivering food to underprivileged people in LA, the two of them have remained literally attached to one another. But when Coronation Day rolls around, they're going to be about 8,500 kilometers apart. The choice for them to divide and conquer, so to speak, is a very atypical one for the two of them. Typically, they do everything as a twosome. Both Harry and Meghan have been ready to talk all about how they're connected and how in love they are, which actually makes a lot of us vomit in our mouths. Last year, in Meghan's first big solo interview since she gave up her keys to the Buckingham Palace stationery cabinet, Meghan told the cut that she and Harry were like salt and pepper. She said, we always move together. And then in that same piece, she said, one of the first things my husband saw when we walked around the house was those two palm trees. See how they're connected at the bottom? He goes, my love, it's us. And now every day when Archie goes by us, he says, hi, mama, hi, papa. Ugh. So why exactly are salt and pepper not moving together as usual this go around? What exactly has happened to their united front? One explanation that has come up is that May 6 also just so happens to be the birthday of their invisible son, Archie Fischl. So Megan is supposedly staying home because she's on parent duty, and Harry's going to go to London to incur the chilliest of receptions from his own family. But there is a pretty obvious rejoinder to this little argument. Last year, both Meghan and Harry, along with Archificial and Invisibet, flew back to the UK for just four days for the late Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebration, and somehow they managed to fit in Invisibet's first birthday party. Considering that both kids, if they are real, are a bit older, this just doesn't make sense. They are much less of a liability on a long transatlantic flight, and Meghan and Harry seem to easily combine both duty and parenting during the Jubilee celebrations, so why couldn't they have done the same thing this go-around? It is assumed that the coronation is going to be finished by about 1 p.m., meaning they could easily be back to Frogmore around 2 p.m., leaving so much time for Archie to be feted by his adoring parents and to eat as much chocolate cake as he wants. But there's another theory about this strange salt and pepper move. Perhaps Megan just didn't want to come. Maybe she didn't want to have to put up with her in-laws disapproving of her, considering that she was going to get B-list seats and also she would have to watch the Prince and Princess of Wales and their kids absolutely showered in adoration. Maybe Megan just could not deal with everything that going back would involve, like emotionally and psychologically and also sartorially. All indications point to the idea that the reception that would have greeted Megan would have been a very unpleasant one, both inside and outside the Abbey. Cara Kennedy wrote in The Spectator, and she reported that a source close to the family who will attend the coronation had told her that Megan's presence may not have been entirely welcome. It's more likely she would have been booed, by the public, of course. And that is an opinion that has been supported by the BBC's royal correspondent, Johnny Diamond. He said during a radio interview, there was genuine concern in the palace that if Meghan turned up, she would be booed on the streets. A palace official said exactly that to me. He went on to say, I think this is probably what they, the royal family, want, which is Prince Harry in the fold. 
Meanwhile, the Daily Mail's Dan Wooten showed up on Twitter to post, huge relief today from William and Kate in particular. Obviously, Megan's presence is not going to be missed. But still, it doesn't really matter why Harry and Meghan made this decision when it comes to the coronation. That simply does not change the fact that Harry now faces having to suffer through what could end up being one of the most difficult days of his adult life all on his own. Aside from the funeral for Prince Philip back in April 2021, when Meghan was supposedly pregnant with Lilibet, Meghan has been right there by Harry's side for the other two big gatherings of Windsor's after Megxit. I'm talking about the Jubilee and Her Late Majesty's funeral last September. But this time, Harry's going at it alone. Of course, no man is an island. But Harry could be about to come very close when he finds himself all adrift in a sea of faces that are not happy to see him. When May 6th rolls around, Salt and Pepper are going to be ever so briefly moving in different directions. But still, I guess they've got a lifetime of hand-holding ahead of them if they want it. Just them and their private security team and the paparazzi of California. As we already know, there is an upside and a downside to absolutely everything. This is just how life goes. Now, many people have been saying that the king should not allow the two of them to join the coronation. People have said that they're going to do whatever they can to make it all about them and their Netflix series. Now, what I think could have happened is the king put his foot down when it came to that invitation, and he told them, fine, if you can't answer, then I'm going to cancel the invitation. And then Harry quickly said, oh, I'm going to come without Meghan. See, Meghan would not allow herself to be at the mercy of the British public. She knows they would boo her. And, you know, they'd probably throw eggs at her, too, as she was sashaying into the abbey. As the old saying goes, be careful what you wish for. Harry's going to be coming all by himself. I'm sure he'll be wired and he'll have hidden cameras all over his body as he's inundated with orders from Megan. So what is the downside to this whole story? Well, I've got to tell you that because the threat level has gone down thanks to the absence of that evil woman, there is really going to be no need for the appearance of our favorite Major Johnny. I'm a big fan of his too, so maybe I'm wrong about that. I hope so. And you, what do you think about Harry and Meghan? Please tell me your opinion below in the comments. If you think my video is useful, don't be afraid to like and share it with anyone else who would enjoy it.